to start us off, just one quick video. It might just give you a little bit of context to myself and the environment that I work in. Uh, very briefly, I tried to be an athlete for 10 years. Wasn't very good, got my PB at 28 and my second best ever performance was at 30. And that was my first international team at the Com Games. Since then, realized, hey, I probably can't get too much better. I've done every single thing that I can and my body's where it is. So as I started to train a little less, I started to coach a little more and that's been my transition over the last five years or so. But this video is just a little snippet of a Monday night training session, just to, again, give you a little bit of context into our life back at home. Let's see if that works. Sorry about the bangers for those that don't like the music. A little bit of cake to finish off the session. I think, Nick, did you just hear the music and thought I don't miss out on this party I'm in? <coughs> so that's literally a Monday night. Uh, so from our end, it gets a little chaotic. Uh, but from a coach's perspective, I just want to pass on that if you've got a couple of combined event athletes that you're happy to work with, they can be the core of your squad. You can work your squad around combined event athletes. That's what I've done back at home. And we've adjusted our training schedule to fit in with the combined event athletes. So in that video, you'll have seen a handful of combined event athletes, uh, one of which went to the World Juniors last year uh, and got a silver. Uh, you would have seen a bunch of javelin throwers. You will have seen distance runners, jumpers, and sprinters. And there's a lot of what we do there that crosses over. There's a lot of athlete training as opposed to heptathlete or decathlete training. How long was it Monday night session? Monday night session, uh, with a bit more context, 4.30 to 5.45 is now our juniors. Uh, and then 5.30 through till 6.45 is our track session. So it would be sprints, hurdles, and then we're straight into the gym. And I cross my fingers that we're efficient enough in the space that we have and the numbers that we've got that we're done by 7.30 to 8. Sometimes it does push a little longer and I'm very mindful that that makes a longer session, but the confines of our environment that's what we've got to work with. So very quickly, for those that don't know, the heptathlon in this order, and the decathlon, which uh, for those hanging around, starts in a day. Oh, and that's their order. Did I accidentally skip through the 15 really quick? <laughs> Oops. Ah, it, was, it was just reflexes. So what I want to briefly cover again, just to give an overview, is a bit of a profile of the athlete. What does a multi-eventer look like? Have a very brief overview of the events, because I think innately we need to understand what the events are, what the three big rocks in each event is. So then we can start looking, okay, well, how do we train it from a coaching perspective? And a, a couple of tips from my experience, albeit short compared to some, on what we do as coaches. So a few profiles. Now I don't want to inundate you with a whole lot of numbers. I know some of you love the stats, that's why I've put them there, but I'll highlight the things that I think are important and relevant. This dude for a long time, greatest athlete of all time. You look at some of his personal bests and if you're a jumps coach, you probably go, ooh, I'll take you, thank you, you're my long jumper. 8.23, that's not a bad PB for someone that doesn't train full time for long. 10.21, oh yeah, I'll take you for the 100, but 
Hey, he's from the US, 1021 doesn't quite cut it over there for the 100. But to highlight him and everyone that follows, there's not really a weakness in there. World record holder, uh, but I do want to highlight 185, 84 kilos. Prior to him, my idol as an athlete growing up, Roman Chevrolet. Uh, and I'll give you 10 seconds just to look through his PBs because my laptop is going flat. So to become a world record holder, that's the standard that we need to be at. So he's currently third best all time now. Only three people have ever gone over 9,000 points. But again, of note, 1 meter 86 and 88 kilos, which just so happens to be the exact same height and weight of the previous world record holder, same country, uh, and, and similar personal bests. So if we flick through pretty quick, 185, 186, 186. And then Dan O'Brien, a lot of us will know, phenomenal talent, 188, uh, 84 kilos. So we're starting to get a picture that Hey, if you want to be in the top handful in the world ever, geez, if you're not 180, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or that 84, 5, 6 <coughs> kilos, where do you sit? Daley Thompson, probably the most famous amongst all of them. As a decathlete growing up, oh, Daley Thompson was the reference that most people would point out. Uh, again, some pretty impressive PBs, uh, was a little bit heavier than some. And this gentleman is the man of the moment. These were his PBs a year ago. And for us combined event enthusiasts, we'll know that Talence, where he broke the world record last year, has just finished, it just finished this morning. We might touch on a couple of those stats in a sec. But they were his PBs just before he broke the world record. And to compare, on the right-hand side were his 10 events when he did break the world record. And I think there's a lot of power in looking at that contrast that if you want to be your best, it's about doing it on the day. And we'll talk about that as we go. But again, 185, he's probably a little bit lighter than a few of the other boys. He might be an extra kilo at the moment. Um, but for a 75 kilo guy, 16 meter shot put, it's pretty impressive. And for the girls, Let's, uh, let's look at a, a similar situation. So Jackie Joyner Kersey, no one's really touched her. 7291 world record. I think it'll sit there for a while. We'll wait and see. Uh, but again, height, weight. Carolina Kluff, second best ever. Height, weight. Nafi, she sits a little bit outside the norm. And I was just saying as usual before we started, I went to sleep last night after the long jump in Talence and I thought something massive was on the cards. She jumped 202 in her heptathlon yesterday uh, and a lot of other really impressive performances. But through injury, her javelin was 10 metres less than normal and her, uh, 1500, her 800 was five seconds slower. So she still won the competition with 6,800 points. But again, we're talking seven events, not five amazing and oh, I'm a bit injured in two. So, yeah, big things to come from her. Uh, and Larissa Tuchinskaya was my coach for 13 years. Is the only other athlete to have gone over 7,000 points. And again, we get an idea that as a female, we're looking at 178, 178, 184, 176, give or take. And that 65, 6, Larissa was on the heavier side. I looked it up, I googled it, I thought how heavy was she when she competed, couldn't find it uh, and she said oh somewhere between 68 and 72 depending on the season and what I eat the week before and all of those things. That's all well and good, we're looking at the top handful in the world uh, and it's probably not the demographic that we all tend to spend our time day to day with. But if we're looking for, for champions, it gives us an idea. And of course, there are outliers to everything, just to throw that in there. 
But where were they back when they were juniors? Again, heaps of stats. Let's not worry too much about them unless you're a, a stat fan. Ashton Eaton as a junior, pretty good, but pretty fresh to it all. Roman Chevrolet as a junior, took a lot longer to get good. But of note, at 37 years of age, was still scoring 8,000, which I think is just phenomenal. He could probably go out there now and score seven and a half. Uh, Kevin Mayer, super talented junior. He won World Youths, he won World Juniors. The next year went to the Olympics as a youngster. Uh, and then in the following Olympics, got a silver medal. Uh, then went on to win the world championships, break the world record. He's the man of the moment as far as combined events go. And there's a lot of poetry in his 9126 world record. At that level, first time anyone had ever gone exactly the same amount of points first day to the second day. There's a lot of symmetry and balance and it just sounds delicious from a combined events perspective. And it reflects the type of training that he does. They do a lot of balance training. They do a lot of symmetry training, a lot of flexion, extension work. Uh, and ironically, it took him exactly 10 years to break that world record. He was with his coach for exactly 10 years, 10 events. And we could go on with the poetry, but just a, a side note. Dan O'Brien, and again, these are the best ever. Thomas Dvorak, Daly Thompson. But the point I want to make very clear is that if we look at when they did their personal best, 26, 27, every single one of them. So if we're working with junior athletes, 15, 16, 17, 18, we need to start instilling that if you want to be a combined event athlete, every single one of the top six in the world ever we're 26 to 27. Doesn't mean it might not take longer, but we need to prepare our athletes that, hey, it's a 10 year journey. And sometimes that's pretty hard when, I know a few of us yesterday were saying, hey, you know, do athletics, we're the best sport, don't go to footy, do athletics, it'll take you 10 years of hard work. It's probably not the easiest sell. You won't earn any money. Will and yeah, you might, not, you might not earn millions. And then when you finish, you'll have to start studying to then get the job and, and all of those things that we as coaches know, but that then comes down to how do we sell it? And I think there are a whole lot of other benefits and, and combined events I'm a bit biased of, I know. But the camaraderie and the enjoyment that you get from doing a bunch of different events with some really good people has got me sold. If we look at the girls, again, similar situation. And again, I don't want to go into the details, but I know some of us love them. Carolina Clough, amazing world junior effort, twice. She won world juniors as a bottom age and then came back two years later. 6,470 is a phenomenal score, especially as a junior. Then went on to win the world champs in 2003, 2005, 2007. Had a lot of injuries like a lot of athletes. Decided I might just try the long jump. So moved across to the long jump, didn't do any more heptathlons. Didn't work out perhaps as well as she would have liked with injuries. Uh, but hey, won a few world champs, won an Olympics, is still in the top few all time. And Nafi, we've spoken about her, is on the rise, still young. Larissa, she scored her PB at the age of 24. And again, these are the best ever in the world in order. So hopefully we get that same picture loud and clear. With the girls, Carolina, she changed events, so maybe there was more in the tank, maybe not. Uh, and Nafi, she's only 24 now. So if everyone else at 26 is doing their personal best, then she's probably one to watch over the next couple of years. There's obviously a lot of things that go into that. <coughs> Qualities to look out for. These are the things that I think we all know. And if we had 45 minutes, we could play a lovely game and we could write them all on the board and we could throw them out. But let's pretend 45 minutes down the track, we've just done it. For combined event athletes, most of them love the sport. 
Most of them are pretty determined, going to have to have pretty good work ethic. Put a question mark on organise. We all know that the best of the best sometimes are those erratic personalities that are not quite organised and you have to, you know, hold on to their bag for them, otherwise they'd leave it at the track. You have to ask them, where are your shoes? Oh, you left them at home. And a couple of the physical qualities, of course. We, we need to be fast, explosive, like most athletes do. Blah, blah, blah. And maybe you know, long hair might help. Uh, and these are just a few of the guys that I coach. Uh, at the start of last year, we all went up to Brisbane for a competition because our state championships got cancelled. It was going to be too hot in Melbourne. And we were just looking at the Melbourne uh, weather just before. It's four degrees in Melbourne right now, so the lovely contrast. Uh, but on the right, Gary, he went to World Juniors, scored 7798, went to Texas University, uh, and unfortunately no height in the NCAAs uh, a week ago. Um, but going quite well. The guy in the middle, uh, Seb, he'll be out here in the under 20s. And David Brock on the left, he has won a national title before, came second this year. Uh, and is doing the old, oh, I want to be a decathlete, but I've just finished my osteo, I want to work, I've got to earn money, and the challenges. Get ready, another quadrant. But we're going to be really quick with this quadrant because I think it is pretty obvious and it speaks for itself. If we're looking for combined event athletes, we're probably not looking for someone with no talent and no commitment. And we know how the quadrant works. And this is the reality. There are a lot more people down bottom left. And that's great. But in combined events, we're looking for those in those yellow sections. If you're going to be good at combined events, you need some talent. But I'd prefer the commitment as a coach. We're looking at a 10 year commitment if you're going to be your best. I don't care how talented you are, if you can't last three, four, five, six, seven years, you're not going to last and then you're not going to be there. So the commitment for me is a really big one. And I think with a lot of us as coaches, there's probably a quality that sometimes we prefer over that little bit of extra talent. Because that little bit of extra talent can drive us as coaches nuts. <laughs> uh, but for combined events, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And personally, I attribute my longevity in decathlon to all of those that were so much better than me that decided, hey, I'm, I got injured, I've had enough. And then they wouldn't rock up next year and I'd say, thank you very much, I'll just keep going. And so on and so forth. So, the multi-events, the events themselves. Uh, Darren Clark and Celeste Mucci, What is the aim? Like, what's the outcome? What are we doing it for? What's the result? What is the purpose? What, what's the point? That's a gag, by the way. You can, you can laugh at that one. Oh, geez, are we that early? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's points. That's what, we're, that's what we're after in combined events. This level of performance equals this many points. If your performance increases in an individual event, you get more points. It's as simple as that. And of course, a bit of enjoyment and fun. You've got to throw it in there, otherwise you get in trouble. But it's not just points. It's a sum of seven events in two days. It can't go over three days, a competition. It'll be null and void. And there was a comp in the US a couple of years ago through weather, it crossed over midnight and all of a sudden <coughs> couldn't count. So it has to be over two days and that's the points that we're looking for. I know that sounds super basic, but hopefully it makes more sense as we roll through. And decathlon is the same thing. We're trying to get as many points in those two days, in those 10 events as we can.
here are some athletes that in their own right, phenomenal talents. And to just give you some context, when your PBs add up to 8,000 something, you're a pretty good athlete. Anyone out there over the weekend that can reel up, roll off performances like that, we're gonna know who they are. If your PBs add up to 9,000, you are freakishly talented and any football or rugby team will say, thank you very much, come over here. You can't kick? Oh, okay, we'll teach you that. Here's a million dollars just for the year, sign up. For these guys, their differential is too high. And there are some reasons why they might have amazing PBs and perhaps not as relative decathlon PBs. Great natural athletes. Maybe they competed a whole lot in indiv individual events so could push their PBs up and then didn't have a lot of competition opportunities in the combined events. Maybe their body type changed over time. Maybe they started off as a shot putter and could throw 17 meters in the shot put, but hey, that didn't work for my sprinting. So I needed to trim down and a few other considerations that we can chat about another time. These athletes, on the other hand, they were able to get the maximum out of themselves on the competition day, when it actually counted. Bruce Jenner, best of the lot in that sense, or whatever you want to call Bruce Jenner these days. Uh, and a few reasons. Maybe it's the competitiveness. Maybe it's that mental capacity. Maybe they didn't compete as often in individual events. And therefore, when they got to a combined event, their expectation of PBs was a little higher. But what we're trying to do as coaches and what we're trying to do as athletes is improve our PBs. Of course, that's what any kid's going to tell you. But we also need to improve our combined event best. And to me, that's more important. If that's what we're there to do, combined events, then that's where we need to focus our improvement. And they don't always go hand in hand as even <coughs> as it might sound. How can that not be? If you're going to put your combined event, event PBs up, plus <coughs> four PBs in the other team. If our combined event PB goes up, then our PBs will generally go up. Kevin Mayer was a really good example. His PB for the 100 was 10.7, he broke the world record, he ran 10.55 that day. So his PB of course goes up, but it goes up in the setting of a decathlon. Oh, that, sorry, yeah. So there's not always the case, of course. <coughs> but the point I'm trying to get across is, if we're combined eventers, we want our best in those two days. And as a result, if we can decrease that differential, great. My coach, when I was growing up, he pointed me to a paper that he wrote and he said, a good decathlon, 300 point differential. A great decathlon, 150 point differential. An outstanding decathlon, less than 150. And I haven't seen too many people do the less than 150. Uh, and for those that got my little accent there, Ephraim Shurovetsky, thank you very much for <laughs> all the help. But when we look at the pieces of our puzzle, and with every coach, we have a lot of pieces. We have the physical, we have the psychological, we have the strength, we have the speed, we have the technique and a hundred other things. Combined eventers, we've probably got a couple of extras. It's about what we do with those pieces. So I want you to close your eyes just for 30 seconds. No one's gonna come and tap you on the shoulder so it's a safe environment. And just, just close your eyes and just imagine that, hey, you're not a coach today your piano teacher. And with piano, we need to hit the right keys at the right time if the song's gonna sound the way we want. We can't hit one key too often, otherwise it'll sound rough. And this is what your student produces.
All right, and open your eyes. Not too bad, I thought. Had a little bit of rhythm to start with. And then I got a little bit ugly at the end, would you agree? All right, we wanna try and prevent the ugliness. If we start smashing keys and we're not quite sure what those keys do, then hey, are we doing too much in one area and not enough in another? We'll come back to that analogy shortly. There's a good way to stop the ugly to capitalize. Put the fifth attack first. <laughs> oh, I think that'd make nine ugly events following it. <laughs> well, we could just take it out. A vote, take it out. Thank you. Let's. All right. We've got nine events left. Or maybe we'll throw in a triple jump. I don't think. Or hammer. For those that aren't perhaps as familiar with the combined events, some of the questions you get asked, well, where do you put your focus? Where do you put your effort? How are we going to train these? And are all events even? And I hear it in little athletics more often than anywhere else. Oh, but oh, the, the throws, they score lots of points. So like, well, no, every event scores lots of points. If you're really fast, you get lots of points for being fast. If you're a really good thrower, you get lots of points for being a thrower. So to just give us a visual, for the girls, 1,000 points requires those results. Now for combined event athletes and coaches, there are some here, 1385, a lot of hurdlers, oh, sorry, a lot of combined event girls, they can run 1385. You go to the Olympics, if you're not running 1385, you're in that first heat and probably not in the, the top 20. 182, that's solid. 17, no one's throwing 17 in a heptathlon. So if you're gonna put all your eggs in one basket and say we need a thousand points per event, well, we're gonna to have to focus on the shot put. It might not be your best bang for buck. 23.8, that's solid, but a lot of girls run 23.8. 6.48, that's pretty solid. And if you think if you did all these seven, you add up to 7,000 points, as a coach in the areas that we are, if we had any athlete that was doing any of these events, you'd think, boom, they're really good. This is my event. If you're a 648 long jumper, of course, you're a long jumper. We just add on this much and boom, you're at the Olympics for the long jump. But to be a 7,000 point heptathlete, you need to be comparatively that good across the board. So if we're gonna create combined eventers that can get to the top, this is the level that they need to be at and it takes time. So as coaches, when we see a 14, a 15, a 16 year old that is doing multiple events and hopefully until that age they are for that development, let's not be too quick to say, wow, you're 15 and you're running 10, nine, you're fast and you're gonna be a sprinter. Because the reality is if we are gonna produce good combined eventers, that's a standard. Like you have to be at least that fast if you're gonna be competitive. With the boys, similar. Those speed events, a lot of guys can run 10.39, it sounds fast, but it happens. 7.76, pretty good, but a lot of guys can jump 7.70. No one's ever put 18.40 in a decathlon before, so again, that's a bit of an outlier. 56, or was it 18.20? Take Smith out. I don't think anyone else has thrown over 18. There's been a couple of high 17s. Uh, and the discus, 56-20, no one's thrown 56-20 in a combined event yet. Brian Clay threw 55, and there's been a few guys close. Um, and Lynn and Victor, maybe is the next guy to throw something that big. And no one's gonna run 353 at the end of a decathlon. <laughs> there may be some decathletes out there that have capacity to do that, but for any distance coaches, do the first nine events with the physical and mental drain of a decathlon, you're probably not running a PB in that 1500. So that just gives us a bit of a summary as to where things are at there. Ditching us. That's all right, sorry. you know enough about combined events to get you through. This is a little visual of how things perhaps link together. So again, these are the rocks. What are our big rocks? What are we gonna work on first? If you're a sprints coach, same deal. 
what are a few of your key big rocks that in a coaching program you make sure have the weight that they need. So when we look at the events, let's not spend all of our time on the outside here because if we spend all of our time on the 800, the attributes of an 800 runner don't necessarily correlate as well to the other events. Likewise with the shot put. If we spend our time improving our shot put, then maybe that doesn't correlate to some of the other events. So we need bang for buck. One of my best friends taught me back at school, efficiency is effective. And he reminds me daily. And I think that's really important for us when we program and combine events as an example, where are we gonna get the best bang for buck? And it's probably in that middle area. Let's improve our hurdles. We improve our flexibility, we improve our speed, we improve our explosiveness. Is that gonna help our long jump, 200? Hurdles, high jump, javelin, probably. And likewise with the men, let's not spend too much time working the attributes from the outside. Let's start from that core and then as time progresses, we can work out. I'm gonna fly over the events because I think now we know the events and we can spend hours looking through them. But let's look at these big blue circles because it's important as coaches, we really identify what our big rocks are for our events. Then we can extrapolate, all right, what are we gonna do to make them better? So sprinting, stride length, frequency, and reaction time. If anyone thinks, nah, these are nowhere near our top three, really happy to have that chat later, but this is just a bit of a summary. Long jump, takeoff speed, takeoff height, landing efficiency. High jump, run up, take off, flight phase. If we're gonna break it down simplistically, shot put, speed height, angle of release, projectile motion. 400 meters, max speed. Hey, if you're not fast, you're not running a 400 very quick. Speed endurance, anaerobic capacity, and some mechanical efficiency. Hurdles, max speed. Range of motion, rhythm, coordination. Discus, sorry about the picture. Speed of release, angle of release, and there's a rhythm and a coordination that goes with rotation. Pole vault, speed at takeoff. We're starting to hear that word speed often. If you're slow, combined events might not be for you. <laughs> Wish someone told me that 10 years ago. <laughs> Gymnastics capacity, kinesthetic awareness. Ah, lucky you, Kim. That's when you get to work with those lovely combined eventers. And then you get entertained by their competition three months later, where you see absolutely every technique under the sun. Javelin, <coughs> speed and angle of release, competition consistency is a really big one when we're looking at combined events. Nafi being a really good example. She threw 59 meters a couple of years ago. Through injury, through 47, but hey, maybe it's a little bit different. You see some of our really good girls as well that are throwing mid 60s and all of a sudden there's a 54 meter throw in there. How does that happen? 20 meter shot putters don't throw 1750. They throw 19, 20. Uh, and then the 1500 or the 800, aerobic capacity of course, race pace, tactics, and that mental capacity I think is a bigger one in combined events than perhaps it is in the individual events. Because if you don't have something to run for, it's still gonna hurt, but it'll be 20 seconds slower. Are we okay that we went through that really quick? Just as a super quick overview. There have been a couple of exceptions where kids have gone in individual events and then turned into Gathon later. Jagan Holmes' classic example is a 19 year old, one world juniors in the high jump uh, with 2.30 and um, Made it, they made a decision at the time to combine and he currently holds his gun record at 8.490. Yep. And the, the second best ever at the moment, uh, Scott Ferrier at 8.307, I think. He came into the sport quite late. He came from cricket and very quickly got turned into a phenomenal decathlete. Had attributes that could jump 
I think jumped 218 off one leg and 209 off the other leg in high jump and yeah, if I if I heard the story one more time about his water running because he got injured and this was before I think it was before the Olympics and my coach said we do six weeks water running he come out around 46 39 in the 400 and I would hear that story every week for about 10 years 46 39 it's like cool now make me run 50 <laughs> but it didn't work uh, but yeah a phenomenal talent and everyone will come in from different avenues of course but I think that's what we don't do very well here we don't take too many athletes from the jumps or the sprints or the throws when they're 16, 17, 18 and say, hey, have you thought about combined events? Because not many people are prepared for that next three, four, five years. So Josh Connolly is probably the, the one that stands out at the moment. Really good high jumper, lovely work, and is now doing that transition. Is going really well, but of course, it'll take time. Just a quick snippet on a little side note. For combined eventers, this is just something that sort of we've put together over time that we think is valuable from a recovery perspective and the order of the modalities. So after day one, our guys will do something along these lines. The nutrition and the hydration. As soon as you finish, get the fluids up, get the food in. Then go for a light jog, a little bit of stretch if you need, and a couple of run-throughs. So by the end of those run-throughs, you're actually feeling okay. Helps with the mentality just as much as anything else. Then, most of our guys will get in an ice bath. We can argue whether it does anything or not, whether it's, yeah, let's maybe leave that to the side because it's probably a really big one, but they will, eight or 10 minutes. Then if they've got tights or any other compression garments, that's when we'd put them on. Get back into the nutrition, the hydration. So we're talking dinner now, like a proper meal of good food. Most kids these days know what good food and not good food is. If we have it on hand, that's where we would put the massage. More of a flush just to make sure that the blood flows there, make sure the body temperature isn't lower than it needs to be heading to bed. And that's probably the biggest one. Sometimes it's a luxury with very short turnarounds from the end of one day to the start of the next and depending on travel and other logistical nightmares, you don't always get anywhere near as much as you want. But I thought it just valuable to throw a little snapshot of, from a combined event perspective, what would we do? And I think there's a lot of crossover to other events there. The coaching side of things. So now that we've got some context about what the events are and what our ideal specimen of a combined eventer is, how do we coach combined events? And the answer is with difficulty. Because all of your athletes you know are individuals and you have to train them individually. But then when you've got seven or 10 events to play with, there are more pieces of the puzzle that we need to work out where do they go. And the pieces of the puzzle with combined events are not the same size. So we need to make sure that we're putting the big pieces in first because maybe we don't get time to play with every single piece of the puzzle as we would like. And I love this picture because it's all relative to where we're going. We spoke about leadership and touched on goals yesterday. Unless we know the end point, then what are, we, what are we doing with our pieces and where are they going? It's probably a philosophical question that we can chat more about over lunch. <coughs> Just a, a quick little insight to a few things that I think are really important. So from a coach's perspective, combined events is sort of at my core has formulated the company that I now work in and on and around and through, uh, and our logos, and you'll see some links there. 
But the thing that I think our squad have done really well is that, that bonding, that camaraderie, that I'm your mate both in and outside the track. So if we're outside the track, I'm giving you a hand. If we're in the track, we know that there's a job to be done. Let's be efficient, let's get it done, let's help each other out. And one of the things over the last few years that's helped that is a camp that we run every year. And we touch on a whole lot of different things, physical, psychological, social, emotional, blah, blah, blah. This is just a one minute video of that camp environment. So hopefully that gives you just a little insight to the environment of our squad. That was about a year ago now, but that's a staple in our yearly training cycle. We go down to the beach, we do a few different sessions, and I've found it's bonded the squad immensely, and it makes my life as a coach so much easier when we're all on the same page. When we're all understanding that, hey, sure we are in a sport, we're training for performance, but that sport is literally just the catalyst for us to become better people. And that at the core of my coaching philosophy is what it's all about. We're training people. Athletics is just almost the byproduct. That's what brings us all together. But my squad now understand that and they help each other out in that sense. And we all know we go up and down in waves. It's not a combined event thing. This is life, <coughs> let alone sport. And now that they understand that, they can see in another training partner's eyes, hey, you're having a bad day. A little pat on the back, boom, it's sent them back up. So as much of a side note as that sounds, I think that is at my core. And I think it's really important that the environment that we create for combined event athletes or any other athlete for that matter is at the heart of what we do as opposed to continually pushing the performance I think the performance will come when we're looking at performance it's pretty handy to know what affects performance so in heptathlon if we're gonna get 50 points more in an event that's all we need. And every combined of an athlete will look at that and go, oh, 50 points more in the 200. I've got to run half a second faster. They will put that on a scale of, that's really easy to get. Yeah, I'll just get a tailwind. It'll happen. Nafi is an example. Her 200 meter PBs and a 1.6 headwind. You don't get to choose in combined events. You can't wait half an hour. You can't often turn the direction. It is what it is. The 800, some people say, oh, four seconds, that's a lot easier to get. I'll just go for an extra 20 minute jog a week. So if we know what makes the performance increase as far as points, then we've got more idea of what our big rocks are and how we can focus. 50 points in decathlon. This is something that the athletes should be aware of as well. And if you've ever worked with combined event athletes, these are the games that they play with themselves. Oh, I want to run 12 seconds in the 100 today. And then they run 12-3. Oh, geez, I missed out on some points. I'm going to have to get them back in the long jump. Oh, 12-3, that's, oh, yep. 55 points in the 100, I lost. I'm going to need 55 points back in the long jump so I can stay on track. Well, 55 points in the long jump 
Oh, I need another 23 centimetres there. So it's games that they innately play with themselves anyway. All right. For the final time this morning, I'd just like you to close your eyes again. And imagine you've put in the hard yards as a coach for a while. You've worked out what your big rocks are. You're the piano teacher. You've taught all of the keys correctly. You've worked out where they go, how they're placed, how loud to hit each key, and at what time, what rhythm, and your student comes up with this. like to just start opening your eyes before you drift off to sleep. Do we agree that sounds a little bit better than it did earlier on? We've progressed. There's some balance, there's some symmetry, there's some timing. We've got the right keys in the right place. So when we look at how do we coach combined events, how do we program for combined events, we need to get that balance right. We can't do everything all the time. Combined eventers, they get injured. Walkers, they get injured. Pole vaulters, they get injured. Combined eventers have more ways to get injured. So I'm very mindful of the likely injuries that come from combined events, and they are a couple of the big keys that we program into our training. For example, I spent five years myself with patella tendon problems. A blessing in disguise, it ruined five years of my athletics. I didn't do a decathlon from 2003 to 2008. But the experience of learning, why did this happen? Where is the research? How do we prevent it? Touch wood, none of my athletes have had that. Or have not had it last. Some have come in with those issues and we've been able to mitigate them. So putting a couple of keys or those big rocks into our training program that make sure that that's not gonna come. For example, to be really practical, it might just be some ISO or some eccentric leg extensions, just as a supplementary in the circuit exercise in combination with strength training. So to wrap up, just a few little takeaways. A lot of us are coaching junior athletes and hopefully we can take them through to the senior ranks. The more junior they are, hopefully, they're training a multi-event approach to get a well-rounded experience in our sport, but to develop all the attributes that any elite athlete should have. That then leads them to being a senior athlete, and I want to open the door and encourage all of us to keep combined events as a career pathway in mind. It'd be silly for me not to leverage off the successes of combined events in recent times. We're in a really exciting period of combined events at the moment. The World University Games is coming up and Juju's got a couple of our combined eventers going. Uh, one, Alicia, who won a silver medal a couple of years ago. At the same competition, Kyle Cranston won the gold medal at the World University Games. Celeste Mucci is flying through the combined event ranks. Uh, Cam Newton-Smith and a whole lot of other young juniors are coming through the, the female ranks. Our boys last year, one and two in the world at junior level. Ash Maloney, phenomenal talent. And probably the pinup of decathlon moving forward and if you were a 400 meter hurdles coach, you'd say, 
Come on, Ash, don't waste your time with decathlon. You can get injured. There's a lot of things that go wrong with decathlon. What did you say? You can run 46 point for the 400. Oh, you're a junior? Oh, but what about hurdles? Oh, you can run 14.0 for the men's hurdles. Well, come on, surely first time round you're gonna run 49.0 and you'll stuff up your stride pattern, but you're strong, you're big. You can probably go 13 strides half of the way. We'll train you up for that. You'll run 47.5 in a year. And I don't doubt that he probably could. But when we look back at how good combined eventers need to be to get to the top of combined events, that's one of a whole lot of attributes that an athlete needs. You could look at Ash Maloney and go, mate, you just ran 10.4. How old are you? 19? Don't worry about decathlon. You're running 10.4 now. You're doing all this other stuff. Let's just train you for the 100 meters. And you'll probably have 10 years of being on four by one teams. That's probably not too controversial, but he'd probably get more funding as a relay team member than he would as a combined event athlete. Fingers crossed that's not the case because he, along with a few other athletes, are super exciting talents. And his story, for those that perhaps don't know, is an under 16 athlete. He came second at the under 16 all schools triple jump. He won the pole vault with a meet record at the time of 460, which I think unfortunately is still his pole vault PB. So there's plenty of improvement there still to come. He jumped, I think, 202 in the high jump uh, and similar in a couple of other events. And I had a chat to Mark Stewart and we were looking at who do we put in our under 17 squad? And Mark said, well, you know, I'll, I, of course, I put him in my pole vault squad. Uh, and Nicole Bergman said, of course, I put him in the jump squad. Uh, and I think his sprinting at that stage was probably not yet at the level it is now. So when we're looking for who's coming through in the combined events, sure, the jack of all trades, master of none, combined events might be for you. But if we're looking for athletes that can get to the top, hey, you need to be a master of all trades. The jack of all trades is fun, it's enjoyable, it creates experience and lifts the sport, but it's probably not gonna get you to the top. We need to be a master of all. So just to summarize, identify the big rocks with combined events or whatever individual event that you work with, I'm sure you already do. Focus on them first and then you can look at the other little elements. Everything has to have a purpose. We as coaches don't have time to waste. Our time is precious. The time of our athletes is precious. Let's not do things for the sake of it. If we can't justify why we're doing something and where it is in the program, then maybe it doesn't belong. And play the piano for your individual. What notes do we need to hit for that individual? At what time? How often? How hard? And this is just my personal philosophy that it's people before performance. If you've got a well-rounded person that's pretty happy with life, you can be pretty confident their results will be what they should be. And as coaches, as athletes, enjoy the journey. Thank you.